Uh, welcome to this uh, presentation of Nexam Chemical. We'll do it together, me and Christer. Uh, okay. Next. Uh, uh, today we will focus on the uh, business that we do and the, and the contribution we have in the world and the relevance uh, in the special uh, in relation to, to sustainability. And Krista will dive a little bit in, in the technologies around the recycling of plastics and how we can affect that. Short introduction for myself. First, uh, Nexam develops and produces additives to make plastics better, more sustainable, as was just said. Plastics is, as also, was also mentioned before, a really key and important material to bring technology forward. For example, healthcare, transportation, IT structures, and so on. It's, it's a necessary and a very good material, and often the most sustainable option. But there is also a huge challenge with plastics that was also mentioned before. Uh, when it lands in the ocean, it's very bad, and uh, it needs to be recycled, and there are developments going on short-term and longer-term to get rid of that problem. And we as Nexam want to be part of both making the plastics more advanced uh, and, and better to advance technology in the world, and also to be a part of getting rid of the big problem with plastics as well. Uh, we have uh, patents core competencies uh, and uh, solutions really to make a difference, both for our customers and society. So we are a small, you can say, uh, entrepreneurial clean tech company. We sell for approximately 200 million Swedish uh, 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 material at the current run rate, and we're a little bit more than 50 people employed. We're located in Luma in the south of Sweden, but also in Hungary and Poland, and have representatives all around the world. And we have really a global reach with all our, all our employees and agents. And uh, we have a, a really huge ambition to make a big difference. But what we do is based on the idea of using reactive chemistry in order to modify plastics materials. So with the same kind of ideas, they land in very, very broad application ranges. So we think that we're very concentrated on, on, on our core business, but it lands in very wide field of business. So it's everything from light weighting and miniaturization, microelectronics and so on, ranging to components for, for jet engines and aircraft, uh, and a lot of activity going into, let's say, sustainably driven markets. Uh, a big portion of what we do lands in wind energy, and we are working more and more with the solutions for waste and recycling. And those two are obviously driven by these global mega trends that are necessary that we saw in the previous three presentations, actually. Since I, st I started, I'm fairly new as CEO for Nexam. I started in, uh, in May last year, so a bit less than a year. During that time, we have done a, a full retake on our strategy and our direction with the company. We have redefined our market areas into sections according to the significance for the customer, which is really which property that we can affect of the plastic material, and therefore which kind of solutions we can bring. So we divided it into light weighting. We make additives to make plastics foams, really, to make it possible to make lighter plastic solutions. High temperature, where we really push the borders of into how high temperatures plastics can actually be used. It's useful in jet engines and microelectronics. A third area, which we have been working on a long time, is really how we can affect how plastics look like and the aesthetics of them, but also how well they can survive in the, in the environment, so to say. And the fourth area that we're building is uh, recycling. We have ever had first successes where we're active in upcycling. In this example here is uh, used fishing ropes that can have been converted into ordinary plastic products. Uh, the significance for sustainability of the various areas is obviously uh, the, in, the, in the foam or light weighting area that uh, uh, these foams are used in wind energy and that is uh, the least uh, uh, destructive energy form. and, and uh, our materials make the core inside the wind blades uh, better. Uh, it's also a strong drive in this in the industry to use less virgin PET and less PET that is, could be used for, for food packaging 
and go to lower grades PET, and for that they need to modify the material to function. So we have a big development opportunity there. In high temperature, especially in jet engines, if you can replace metals such as titanium uh, alloys with plastic or actually fiber reinforced composite materials, you can lower the, the fuel consumption. Uh, our knowledge with coloring plastics applied together with recycling of plastics forms a unique possibility to use recycled plastics in very ordinary consumer products. And this is a, a big development that we're working to. And then our specialities on called reactive recycling. We can really upgrade recycled materials. And Christy will tell you more about that. The wind uh, energy is uh, growing, as we saw in the first presentation today. It is a big part of the solution for the future. So we have an accumulated growth over the uh, several years here until somewhere uh, around 2031, estimated to 6% per year, and they're using more and more of recycled PET, so they need more and more additives from us to do this. These are some pictures of composites and metals in jet engines, but uh, if you reduce the weight with about 1% uh, uh, inside uh, the turning parts in a jet engine, uh, which is only possible really with composites, high temperature composites, you can reduce the fuel consumptions quite much. Some more pictures. Uh, we take. We have solutions to take, like general scrap. This actual photo of the, the the recycled material portion that we managed to modify and produce uh, these uh, automotive components. There are parts inside a truck, and uh, a child seat, and so on. So there's a fantastic how much you can do in this area. But I will let uh, Krista go into the reactive recycling and modifications of polymers. That is the, really the core on how we see that we can bring this part of the business forward. So please, Chris. There. Thank you. So the fourth part of the, the strategy is really about recycling. And we will do a little bit of deep dive going into the technology that Axum has, the implication for the customer, and also the impact on sustainability. Because there is a challenge with recycling of plastics. So one of the biggest challenges is that even though you start off with a fantastic material when you produce it, when you have used it and when you process, process it, when you're up at the end of the chain, it's no longer the same polymer, especially if you have recycled it a few times. It's actually broken down, it can be oxidized and so on. So the challenge is actually putting the polymer back into the loop again, because it's not the same polymer, and it can even be difficult to find any application for these material. So the challenge is really, how do we close the loop? And this is where Nexam has developed what we call reactive recycling. Basically, in a simple term, what we're trying to do is to rebuild the polymer chain, rebuild the molecular weight so that it starts resembling the original. This means that our customer can then use this in more advanced application, or they can use the higher degree of recyclers in their, uh, in their uh, product. And one key feature about this one is that they should, our customer should be able to use the existing equipment, and it's only activated by heat. So basically, you have the processes already. The customer don't have to change the processes. They can include our additive and actually improve the value of their recyclers. And during 2023, we have received or have granted two patents for polyolefins. There are more in the pipeline coming to have even better coverage and broader coverage. But how does this really work? Let me show you. Some examples from a uh, scientific study done by a research group in Italy. So what they did was they took a fresh polymer, and then they simulated what happens during recycling, and they basically put it into extruder multiple times. So they take the material, put it back in, back in, and back in. And what happened is that you see the viscosity decrease and as you increase the number of processing cycles. This simply means that you actually do exactly what I said. You're breaking up the polymer chain. You start off with a nice polymer chain, at the end, you have a degraded polymer. So at the end of this nine cycle, this here is very, very difficult to use for basically any application. The good news is that if we take this highly degraded material, we put in our additives, and we use reactive recycling, we're able to build, uh, build it back up. We are building molecular weight, so we're putting it back from what was a really bad material into something that's corresponding um, roughly to the level four. 
So we are actually now increasing the value of this material and increasing the application range where these can be used. So we are re really rebuilding molecular weight. Uh, another key feature is that this is not only applicable to polyolefins, we have other applications. This is PET. There is a long tradition of recycling PET bottles, as we're all aware of. But PET is actually a very versatile polymer that is used for many different applications. So it's not only bottles, you have trays, you have staple fibers, and so on. So there are many grades, in addition to these uh, bottles, that is need to be recycled. And also here, Naxamath technology, where we can connect the polymers back together, thereby increasing the value of it, so we keep it in the loop, or even potentially upgrade the material. And in addition to saving the material, that consequence is also that we're replacing the fossil-based PET with recycled, and then you can also save the carbon dioxide. And you see the numbers on the screen here. But Another important aspect is that, in our mind, it's not only good for the environment to uh, use recycled. We also would like to show that it could be good business. So let me take an example. Uh, recycled PET, as you saw, there are actually quite a lot of it on the market, but it's also very attractive because there's many customers that want to have it, both from a legislation point of view, but also voluntary commitment by companies that want to be forerunners. So even though there are graves available, they tend to be rather expensive if it's of high quality. So what if you have a cheaper material? So you mix in a cheaper material. That makes the cost lower, but also the quality is lower. This is where reactive recycling comes into play. We can actually boost up the performance again to match the original, but you have a lower cost. And if you do the cost calculation, you can see that the additional cost by putting in our additives on, uh, is about 6% of the material cost. However, the increase in the value of the material is in excess of 20%. So what we see here is we can actually take cheaper material and we can build value for our customer using our product. You saw these similar numbers on the previous presentation. So looking at the global production, it is in excess of 400 million tons. It's a huge number, and it's still increasing. However, if you look on a global scale, the fraction of bio-based or recycled material is slim. It's about 10%. So if you really want to make a difference, what we need to do is need to go from the fossil-based to green bio-based uh, bio or recycled. We need to go from the blue to the green. So, and also, please remember that all the blue that we produce today is the material that we should recycle tomorrow. There is a lot of material that we need to take care of. And you can imagine the growth potential of being a company that wants to be part of this transition, increasing the green ratio of this um, production. Finally, if you look at, I talked a little bit about polyolefins, I talked about PET, and if you actually look at the global scale, these polymer constitutes about half of the production worldwide of plastics. So about 200 million tons. So what we have, we have actually solutions where we could make an impact and we could make the recyclability of these materials better. And that's why we believe there's a big potential for these ones. I'm back to you, Oni. Okay. Well, thank you, Christer. Some interesting uh, views on that, and we could talk to all day about uh, recycling and what is possible and not, and so on. But what we see, uh, for us as a company, coming back to us, we see that uh, we have uh, market understanding, we have products and so on in areas where there is significant growth, and we intend to grow together with it. And for us as a company, we've had a very strong growth uh, uh, over a 10-year period of approximately 20% per year. We want to get back to that, although we had uh, fairly weak years in 22 and 23, driven by yeah, the economic factors that we've seen in, in the business uh, recently. We have, during that period, gained more projects and found more things to do, but uh, 
and more customers, but the, the general market has, has plummeted a bit. It's getting back to track since second quarter last year. We have sequential growth and we're coming back into business. And our intention is, of course, to get back to that growth rate we had before. But this time with profitability. We have done a lot of savings programs and we're uh, now in a, a very healthy form. You could say we're more fit as a company. And uh, uh, we have not sacrificed any of the R&D or sales capacity in the process. Um, we have focused uh, or changed uh, uh, commercial strategy focus, which has also implied or, or had a huge effect on how we work in all parts of the company, from production, R&D, sales, uh, uh, administration, etc. We focus on the four areas: light weighting, where we see a recovery. It's still of a bit mar weak market for 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 uh, wind energy uh, currently, but uh, the order intake, thanks to the thanks to the Green Energy Act, thanks to various initiatives around the world, we see a growth in that market that should come during the course of this year or beginning of next year. We have a really positive situation within the market because we work with all the big players there and we have unique solutions to bring in more sustainable and cost efficient materials. High temperature, we have really high order levels for all of 24 already booked. In aesthetics, we work a lot with product innovation and a recycling focus to send, set us apart and also to generate more business and we, we see huge interest from the let's call it normal plastics industry, to really find solutions in day-to-day -day plastic products with recycled materials. And in recycling, we see our first commercial breakthroughs realized over the last year, and uh, uh, we see a lot of collaboration projects with bigger companies and so on, but they are all longer term. And uh, the market paradigm that was really spoken about also in earlier presentations, where we need to move into both sustainable energy and into more recycling of plastics and more bio-based materials. It's favoring our technologies. So why invest in Exxon? We have very high ambitions and plans for 24 and very much so beyond that regarding all financial KPIs. We have been, uh, become a much more customer-oriented and result-focused company. Uh, we have a broad portfolio of clean tech solutions with uh, in four clear segments, all of them having a strong growth potential. And uh, we have clear business cases and a very straightforward go-to-market strategy. All Chrysler's people work on things that we know that we can sell within a reasonable time frame or someone else have to pay for their time. And then um, a lot of it is patented. Uh, we have done a lot of investments in the past years in infrastructure. We've done a lot of insourcing, which has been an important part of our, uh, let's say, improvement of the results. And uh, we can grow, we can actually double more or less the production volumes without adding additional machines. And it's a really good and strong organization uh, that we've formed right now where we can take on much bigger tasks. And uh, we have a business model with a how we function on our local markets and how we are, work on a global scale that could be used by complementing with further investment into, let's say, complementing technology or compl complementing the home markets. So that's it uh, from us. We think that we hold a lot of keys to the future in terms of our patents and core competencies, and uh, we want to make a, be a big part of the transition of the plastics industry. And thank you for your attention. Thank you. <coughs>